Hello and welcome everyone to another InventRight webinar, Master the Art of Licensing. My name is Andrew Krause. I'm over there on the left and the gentleman with the glasses is, or is Stephen Key and he is also one of the co-founders of our business. We've been in business 21 years now and been coaching and mentoring inventors ever since and we have students licensing products all the time. We are doing this free webinar series for the public and it's been fantastic during the uh, pandemic, if that's what you wanna call it. And almost every week, I think maybe one or two weeks, we weren't on, Stephen, almost every week we've been doing this, so hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Tonight, we have a very special guest on and his name is Steve Silbiger and he is with the DRTV company, Top Dog Direct. And he's gonna share with you tonight what is DRTV about? Maybe what is a DRTV product? What isn't? What are they looking for? What do they like to see? Um, I think most inventors have come up with something at some point that might be right for DRTV. And if not, maybe you get an idea of what a good DRTV product is and you want to come up with something, right, Stephen? Oh, exactly. Oh, we're, we're looking for unicorns, DRTV unicorns. There you go. It's your first tip, guys. So you, you don't want like run of the mill stuff, huh, Stephen? No, no, it has to have a wow factor because you're advertising on television, and if you're going to be interrupted in the in your programming, it has to be something that will get your attention. And not only that, have you make a decision and spend money with somebody you don't even know. So it, it takes a special product. Well, and tonight we got two people on. So my business partner, the co-founder of InventRight, he's over there on the left with the glasses. I'll refer to him as Steven. And our guest tonight, I'll refer to as Steve, because I could <laughs> see that. I could see I could see there being some overlap there. Um, Steve, I'm really excited tonight. And you interviewed Steve on um, the YouTube show, too, and got a great response from it. So you said, well, why not bring him on to the webinar, right? Yeah, it was a great response. And I was so happy to have Steve and Jackie on, and they explained a little bit about the industry and what they're looking for, and they gave their, their telephone numbers out. So they're getting a lot of good submissions from the people that are watching the YouTube channel. And you're going to learn a lot tonight of how you can come up with ideas and present them to Top Dog Direct and get those uh, inventions, those gadgets, get those on TV, because this is an extremely exciting industry. It's fast paced, there's a lot of money to be made, but you've got to have the wow factor. So Steve, welcome. Well, hey, good evening. So and, Andrew, what are we I just wanna follow up that a lot of you all from the other other uh, meeting that we had on, on the network, a lot of great response. People have been going to our website and putting a lot of uh, submissions through our website, through email, which is the best way. And some people have been calling as well. Well, people are already asking, Steve, how do I submit? And we're only like two minutes into the <laughs> webinar. <laughs> there are two people. How do I get my idea to Steve? How do I get my idea to Steve? So do they just well, go to Top Dog Direct and click on the submit a product button? Is that the best way? Or? That is exactly right. And I will get an email and Jackie gets an email straight away directly to our email. So there you go. Okay, but okay. So now let's so let's ask you about because that was one to be one of our questions, Stephen, for Steve, right? Yeah. I mean, um, it looks like you full name, city, product name, brief description, and they can attach. We teach our students and our fans to always have a sell sheet or a video. It looks like they can attach a file here, so they can do that. Yeah, we've gotten plenty of sell sheets. Um, some people are at an early stage and submitted like some drawings or what have you. So no, we're open to anything that will convey the product. Okay, cool, good to know. Yeah, Steve, go ahead, tell us a little bit about um, yourself and a little bit about your company, Top Dog Direct. Okay, um, my background, I've been in the business since 1990. My first direct response by baptism and fire was at Nutrisystem. Uh, and then it was National Media and Infomercial Company. And then in 1998, I started my own company, Plymouth Direct, uh, which is, uh, was a subsidiary or an affiliated company with Harriet Carter, the large cataloger. 
And then we created Top Dog Direct several years ago with Bill McAllister's NPI. And it's been a, a great ride. We've found a lot of products, new products, and taken a lot of products to television and to uh, retail. Personally, uh, I am an author of the 10 Day MBA, which has been selling for 25 years. So I know what it means to submit your baby to agents and, main, and uh, publishers and what have you, and to get no response or little response. So I empathize you know, tremendously with inventors. Well, I want to mention this one thing. Everybody that's listening tonight, it's really refreshing, and it's really nice to know that your creativity, your inventions truly, truly matters. And they really do matter to Top Dog Direct. And they're going to get back to you quickly. I love that. Steve told me from the first time I talked to him, he goes, look, we appreciate the, the product submissions. We do appreciate all the work. And we will get back to you one way or the other. So be a little bit patient. They're going to get to you. They're going to look at all your stuff. And they're going to either give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down, or maybe even a little feedback if you're lucky. Yes, so I get feedback on all the items. And I'll usually say, hey, this might not be for TV, but look here or what have you, or it's already been done, that type of thing. Uh, today, I had caught up completely. So I was answering submissions within 10 minutes of their submission. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, and, and for everybody listening out there, do not expect that from other no, companies. No. It will not happen. <laughs> but it, you know, I'm, I'm doing is normal. Jackie, Jackie is, is, you know, uh, on vacation, so we usually split it. But, you know, I was taking care of it today, and you know, we appreciate all your submissions. Wonderful. Well, let's just jump on in, Andrew. Let's go to the next slide. Steve, I want to, we, we have a couple slides of some of the products that you brought to market. Could you talk to a little bit about these products? Okay. You know, everyone is unique and different. Although the last few years we've had a lot of medical uh, area devices and different medical products, the clean zone came about because there's a much more expensive item on the market that we saw. I'm a CPAP user. And then when I was getting my supplies uh, for my CPAP unit, I saw, uh, I saw an ad not an ad, but a listing for this type of product in in uh, in China, and I followed it up, and I went to my sourcer, and then that sourcer went to the manufacturer of these products, and we launched a product for ninety nine dollars instead of three hundred dollars, and hmm. it's a good item, it involves a lot of legal work behind it as well, and product development. But all's well, and it has done very well, and especially during COVID. What, hey. Why legal work? Is it a high liability product, or not? It's you know you have to get make sure the FDA clearance is correct, mm -hmm. as well as you have to make sure the testing is is done properly. Like we already had testing, the manufacturer had testing, but then we doubled down and created our own testing through uh, UL and made sure that it worked as is prescribed so that all our claims are backed up. And so far so good. And uh, we first web tested it and it was positive. And then we created a commercial and it was successful. It's been running on TV since October, last October. Well, wait a minute, Steve, tell me this, $99? I yeah. thought uh, most products were like 1995. You know, it, the, the trend in the industry has been for higher dollar products because the high cost of media and such that 1999, which used to be our price point, just doesn't make any sense anymore. Mm -hmm. And you will see very few. And that gives you very little allowable to spend on advertising because that's our most expensive expense when marketing a product, not the cost of goods. And so we have a product that we're testing now. It is $29.95. We have 
other products, you know, like, you know, Tag Away, which is on there, 19.99. You know, it ranges for some of our old ones to our new ones. So, uh, but we're open to higher dollar items for sure. I love it. Okay, well, another thing that, go ahead, Stephen, sorry. No, go ahead, Andrew. So another thing that I think is is changing with the industry, and I like your take on how it's changing for you and maybe how you know it's changing for other DRTV companies is, you know, like I, I, I don't I don't have cable TV. I have Netflix, I have Hulu, I have I have Amazon Prime, you know, I have I have all that stuff on my TV, right? I stream TV. Yeah. So how has the industry changed in the way that you get the word out about these products? Are we are some companies just doing standard cable TV? Or are you doing a lot of internet ads? Or are you doing maybe you're doing ads like I watch YouTube on my TV at night and I see ads on there because I don't pay the extra ten bucks to not get ads. What's well, changing in the industry and what do inventors need to know? Well, you're asking a really good question. Um, what's happened is obviously younger people aren't watching television, and so maybe it was fortuitous that our products have been going in the medical area so if you're advertised on national cable especially the news channels and all that type of thing the audience is older and so we've had medical and health related items so it affects what products with we're picking and which products are successful and if you look at you know the top 10 products a lot of them relate to that they don't skew younger at all we're actually testing a new product right now that tested okay and we're also going to try to achieve a younger audience with any item that we put on television it has to work on tv first then the internet you know is another ordering way to get the customer to to place their order but you can't start on the internet. Um, we buy Facebook ads, search terms, all that type of thing, and social media as well. But it starts with the television, and that's why the industry has older, attractive products hmm. for an older point. audience. So you brought up a good point. Now here's another one that, that caters to that point, I suppose, huh? Yeah, well, oh, yeah, the Campbell Cane. It was mm -hmm. uh, invented by a man in South Carolina. He had tried to market it himself, you know, through professional area, chiropractors, stuff like that, limited capital. And he brought it to us. We sourced it efficiently in China using some of his sources in China, but then made it more efficient, we made it commercial very quickly. and it's been a very big success for us and for him. He was part of the process, of course, of you know the manufacturing process and the commercial. Um, but you know, it's been it's been great. And obviously, a cane, you know, is something that was great right out of the box, and it's been in the marketplace for a couple of years already. Cool product. You know, you know, Andrew. You know what I really like about this product? It looks fairly simple, but it looks like it really works. He took a, a like a sleeping dinosaur. These canes have been around forever, and mm -hmm. they don't seem to really work that well. And look at this simple change and how great the benefit is. I think it's a wonderful product and a great price point too. Yeah, yeah. Population is aging, and uh, a lot of folks need this. Yep. You know, and uh, yeah. The other, the other outlet that we didn't, I didn't mention. Uh, with the clean zone, which happens to be on QVC right now in the eight o'clock hour, we also sell the the cane, the Campbell cane, on QVC as well, and that also is an older market, um, and so those two items have done well there. Well, can you talk about that? Because you guys getting on QVC is very different than getting on. An advertisement on TV or a Facebook ad or some sort of other advertising. What what's the difference there? You well, want to educate people. When we're selling on television, we have to buy the media to put it on television. That's our most expensive. 
So when you're selling on QVC, you have to provide the product in advance. So you have the inventory risk because if it doesn't sell, you get it back, but you don't have to buy the media. It's up to them. So you're selling it to them at a wholesale level and then they are selling it onto the customer like a retailer. While when you're on television, you're getting the retail dollar, but you're having to pay for the television. Right, makes sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. What about this one? Uh, Night View, that, that, that was kind of fun. You know, this product, we heard one of our product sourcers had sold this product to another company and it was literally an upsell for sunglasses and it had done real well as an upsell. And I looked at it, I go, well, why would it be an upsell to sunglasses? Why don't they sell it as the hero product? You know how many people, especially older people, have problems driving at night because they have this issue? And we immediately hopped all over it and made a commercial and it's still out there. We're not running television anymore, but uh, it's definitely at retail and we continue to sell it. I'll be honest with you on this one. Like, I feel like this product's been selling for 20 years, but yeah. you know, I mean, different versions of it, different companies, different quality levels, but it was still a good seller for you. Excellent. And one of our secrets to our success is uh, we have a great producer in Hutt and Miller down in Florida. And so the one thing we don't want to do with somebody's product is gamble on the commercial oh the commercial's not good if it only would have been better if we have a product that doesn't work and hud and miller did the commercial we know it wasn't the commercial it would be the product and we try to do our best we don't do a lot of products a year we really concentrate to give it our best for each and every product we don't do dozens of products a year we do it sequentially one at a time like where that. do your when you when you sell what percentage of your sales are direct orders from an advertisement as opposed to this, uh, somebody seeing it in the store and picking it up in the store after seeing the advertisement <laughs> that is something that has changed dramatically um currently uh, because of covid uh you know at covid i would say our sales are 90% on television and 10% at retail now. Wow. And in, okay. And so in the past, the television sales, although our, our goals would be to break even or maybe lose a little money and to make it up at retail. And now currently uh, with retail, you know, constrained and what have you, and people are constrained, uh, the retail is very little. And so, but un, but fortunately, we've been making money on television, and the retail will be coming back hopefully next year. Um, there are certain items in DRTV space that have done well, COVID-related items, but in general, things have been much more muted, as I would say. Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that was a great answer. Oh, it, that's fascinating. Oh, let me give you the. The other thing I didn't say, like if I sold one in the past, talking about 2019, if I sold one on television and the internet, which is related, uh, I would sell five to ten, five to ten times as many at retail. But that's not the case now. Hmm. That's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. It's good information to have. Yeah, it's it's a different world. Okay. So there are any trends you, you want to, you want to, that, that's a trend too. It's a temporary trend, I think, but yeah. with and regards to products, remember, any trends there? It, like, like I said, we're looking, you know, health related, medical type of things. Wellness is something of our particular strength, mm. but we're open to everything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, during COVID, at the very first two to three months, uh, all the major advertisers left and the rates of media went down. And when we were buying it, we were buying discounted media with much larger audiences. And it was probably 
the best time in direct response television since I've been in the business since wow. 1990. Hey, Steve, how many products are you seeing today that are COVID related? You know how many masks are being sent to us or mask related items? It, it's really phenomenal. So that area or UV, uh, germ killers, uh, all that kind of stuff that, I mean, it, it, it's obviously a problem for you and I and, and the whole country. And so inventors are thinking about it, but that one, that, that cow's already out of the barn. Okay, so you should, for you, should they, they should not submit those ideas to you or should they or? You know, if it's their item, I'll take a look because you never know, you okay. never know. But yeah, that would be a tough category to get into. All right, good to know. So you, I think you pretty much answered that one. Okay. I think so. I, yeah. Um, but but uh, we talked talk about this everything. one too. You want to talk about it a little more? Price no, range. No. Price range. Uh, it's usually twenty nine dollars on up. Like we sell. Caramia at $59. We're selling a the house party karaoke machine uh, that is at $29 and $99 for clean zone. So it, it ranges. Okay. A ceiling on there for you? Well, I think maybe $149. We've never gone, our company has never gone into payment plans. Um, mm -hmm. And I, we don't envision doing that. So I think our upper ceiling would be $149, something that's still affordable and that a customer could, you know, make it in one payment if the product is phenomenal. Hmm. What do you so require? Uh, not much. Um, um, a cell sheet a picture of the product, uh, a video, a, a rough video, an iPhone video of somebody demonstrating the product would be great. Uh, we've seen uh, last couple of days from your inventors, some sketches. So, you know, I'm open to it all. But, but Steve, let's talk about this for a minute. Let's say I yeah. take it an extra step. Mm -hmm. I, I, I said to you the, the one minute format, it shows a problem shows a solution yeah and it, it really is done i mean it's not high you know production quality i did it with my iphone and maybe i have a little voiceover but does that help you if you do like it from a testing standpoint to take it further yes you your group submitted a product that was a kitchen product and the inventor's video which you call simple was great and we used that video for the web test that we did it didn't turn out successfully but it it really did well i mean so, it's exactly what we would like so it just makes it easier for you to say hey look let's get this uh it's not going to require a lot of work on our part but we think there's something yeah. there so, because we we really like these one minute videos that they're done correctly because we yeah. think it um demonstrates the proof of concept, but it gives you a tool now to take it to the next step if uh, if it warrants it. I totally agree. I don't think it's a waste of time or effort. It's it's perfect. And especially, you know, for us, we're a little more hands-on, but I can only imagine a company that's looking at many of these submissions, that would definitely open a door. All right, good to know. With the right product, of course. Okay. We always tell our students you, you want to submit something, whether it's a short video or a sell sheet, where if the marketing manager saw it, which would be you, would say, oh, if our customers saw this, they would want that. You know, you exactly. basically, I, I kind of joke that you want to kind of assume, this is not insulting in any way, but assume that the marketing manager is so busy, you know, they got people telling them what to do, they got so many projects assume they're half brain dead they're just trying to get through their email and if you don't get their attention in like six seconds you're toast and they won't take a bunch of time to kind of figure it out and think on it because they just don't have the time would you say that's accurate or for you sometimes or 
it's not only accurate, it's even better in my industry of direct response television because the item that I'm looking for can be visually demonstrated. And so if it can be, and that and that if that video somewhat captures the essence of the product, that mm -hmm. essence of the product is what's going to be in my TV commercial. If you're demonstrating a technology or something that might not be TV, you know, it might be, it's obviously still helpful, but it's super helpful for me. Hmm. Yeah, cool. Okay. Now, what wait you, a minute. You, now, wait a yeah, minute. Go ahead. Before we move on, because I think it's really important. Yeah. Steve, do you want a 10 minute video or a one minute video? One minute. <laughs> okay, you heard him, everybody. Send a half an hour video talking about Whoa. your family, how you thought about the idea, everything. That's what he wants. Two minutes would be fine because we do make <laughs> two minute commercials. So a couple of minutes is fine. All right. Uh, I, I, I think anything over a minute. You know, but if hey, if he says Steve's saying two minutes, two minutes is okay. But yeah, yeah no, got, no. I got one today. It was somebody who had created a decorative item, and I think it was like a couple of minutes because he showed it in a variety of settings, mm -hmm. and so it wasn't for me, but I thought it it adequately showed it because what happens if one of those uses are the uses I thought were direct to response television and he covered it really well now you said something earlier they can just shoot this with their iphone or smartphone or something right it doesn't need to be super high production value no, does it? no yeah. and you don't need to have it produced that you have um you know with graphics on it or any wording no today this guy it was just him and his iphone and he showed me the product and he cut to a couple of pictures and it was it was more than adequate to show what the product was all about and that's good. why i told them this could be really good for qvc or hsn not for my purposes and so it was good it was well worth this time good to know so what do you like in the way of intellectual property patents do you care do you not care are you somewhere in between i don't need them for what i do i'd rather be first to market uh but I don't want an infringing product. So that's something that the inventor needs to work on, on infringement. You know, have they done their homework to make sure there's nothing else out there? But to actually have a patent or patent pending, that type of stuff. I know Stephen does some extensive, you know, teachings on this subject, but uh, of what you can and cannot do with your products or the amount of money you want to spend. But for my purposes, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not required. The, 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 the posture cane, uh, has a patent on it and the trademark, but other products are, do not. The Be Active Brace has a patent on it. Uh, Tagway does not. The Clean Zone does not except in China, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, it's not a prerequisite. I love that. Hey, Steve, I got a question for you. And I'm really glad your attitude about that. And, and sell first, sell fast. Okay, uh, you pick up a product, it does pretty good, and you know the competition pretty much comes in if you're successful. Yeah. What do you do about that? Do you do anything at all? Do you just want to get out there and get the shelf space, get everything out there to beat the competition? Because they are going to come, aren't they? If you're if you're good at what you do, well, the people there's, well, there's a you know yes. Uh, if if we're first, that means we're going to have a good run on television at first. We'll talk to Walmart. We'll talk to the major, uh, you know, the major outlets for for products and sew that up first so they don't usually take two of the same type of item mm. you know there has been some exceptions like pans pots and pans a business i'm not in but no we 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 take them head on and we uh try to do our best but mm. the goal would be to be at retail first got it uh the other thing is we like to have a product like some of our products like i said we've had to do extensive testing uh legal work and what have you and so some of the products that we have done some of our competitors would not have done because they didn't want they don't want to do that type of homework 
and that's mm -hmm. kept some of our you know kept some of our products with a fence around it Andrew you know what's really interesting with what Steve just said you know first to market you have kind of ownership just because you're there and how many people want to carry a me too that's right. a form of protection in itself so speed to market is critical yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely so I think you talked about this how long does your review process take um it's very quick it's Bill McAllister myself and Jackie and we don't have like committee meetings or if we love it we're right all over it hmm. you know there's oh. not an overabundance of great television ideas so if something comes in like Mr. Campbell or the be active brace or something like that uh we're on it very quickly well let's let's expand upon what we mean by review process yeah. so it comes in you got the email from the inventor of the submission through your website and you're kind yeah. of interested can you explain that process all the way up to it getting on tv and how sometimes it can fall down and it won't get there can you explain that process sure. Well, it usually we'll like the product, we're excited about it, and then if if we are if we are 100% in straight away and we know we're doing this commercial because maybe some previous sales history the inventor has or what have you, we can go immediately do a commercial and we're going to television. But a lot of the products, we're not that certain, so we'll do a web test that could take about three to four weeks because uh, we create a, a website we and uh, do that type of work with the inventor to uh, to test the viability of the product. Uh, Jackie will create a letter of intent of what we intend to do and then if it passes that test then we'll be doing a commercial. Nice. So a couple of months we'll know if we're going forward in a couple of months. Got it. Do you do you do you um so you just tell the inventor that's the process? Do you get them signed up then in some way? Yeah, this letter of intent. Got it. Okay. So we'll sign it. They'll sign it. Uh, it's not a law. It's a two-page thing, just saying what we're about to do, what you are responsible for as an inventor, and you know, off to the races. And then the contract, the full-on contract comes later? It would come later. At that okay. point, we know exactly what we need to sign up and what rights and, you know, make it make it legal. Why would we spend thousand, a thousand or a couple thousand dollars on a contract or start negotiating a contract when there's, you know, it's not successful at that point. Okay. Right. Hey, Steve, I have a question. Everybody's asking, is there a standard royalty rate or... If there is, what is it? And can I do anything more to increase that royalty rate? <laughs> no, that's a good question. Um, it depends on the retail price of the item and the cost of goods and how much how much effort, how much investment is in that product. Uh, for instance, the Be Active Brace, uh, you know, the, the range that we've paid is between one and five percent of the retail price of the product and the uh depends on how much how much is into it and what the margins are okay. you know every product is a little bit different like if somebody had uh just like a drawing and the drawing was a great idea that would be a low royalty rate because we would do everything but if somebody has come in and they have a patent, they've already done manufacturing work, they have it sourced, all that kind of thing, uh, then you know they get a much higher royalty rate. Hey, Steve, what happens if um... or the Campbell cane was another similar where a lot of the heavy lifting was already done? Oh, nice. So let's say. Um... I'm an inventor, I come up with this idea, and I kind of want to venture it myself. I put it on Amazon and it does pretty well, but I realize I'm just one person. I'm not very good at selling or marketing, 
but I've got a pretty good, I mean, I'm selling some product. Would you still look at an idea like that? Yes. The, you know, the sales history on Amazon would be a, a good indication that there's demand for it. So I would take that as a positive. I like that. But, but Amazon is a very slippery slope. There are tens of thousands of thousands of people that look on Amazon specifically to to rip off those products and they are totally unscrupulous they have no respect for any of our laws they have an advantage selling them direct to the US public because some weird weird uh, postal agreement so Amazon okay. is a very treacherous place to be testing a product yeah, How about I, Stephen, and I want to talk, speak to that real quick, Stephen. So, Stephen, I mean, we, yeah. we've talked about there being some advantage to first to market. So, you license it to a really big company. They blow it out there really, really big on TV advertisements, QVC, HSN, maybe Amazon too. And that can be a safer way to go than to try to sell a few units yourself on Amazon um, to prove there's a market. So, it sounds like there's ups and downsides to going Amazon to prove there's a market. And uh, most of our students don't take that path, but it is a path you can take, but you just, Steve, you just highlighted the risk there. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's getting a bigger and bigger risk these days, it seems like. Yeah, there's a there's a big risk there. What about um, the crowdfunding thing? I put it, you know, I want to raise some money. I put it on crowdfunding and the thing does really, really well. Yeah. Is that going to hurt my chances of licensing it to you? Um, it wouldn't hurt. We're currently looking at a, an item that is being crowdfunded now successfully, but you're exposing it to the world. You're exposing it to a very broad audience. Um, mm -hmm. So it, that's a dangerous area. Would you yes, say I'm the not... same? Would no. you say the same thing is true for Shark Tank? Well, Shark Tank, if you're on Shark Tank, you know, there, there's a long process there. But if you're the person being trying to get that deal and you're with Lori Grenier or one of those people, I mean, that could be the launch of a very successful product. But let's say I go on Shark Tank and, and I do okay, but I don't take the deal. You know, for some reason, I'm not, you know, something goes wrong, I don't take it. Um, does that exposure scare you at all? If I was on Shark Tank and I was already well funded to do what I wanted to do without them, and I was going on Shark Tank to get national exposure, kind of yeah. like, I just think Squatty Potty was a successful product before it got to Shark Tank. So okay. they all of a sudden got, you know, they went from great to phenomenal because you know they had all this exposure but if you're not if you know if you're a small guy i think you know there's not a whole lot to lose to be on shark tank uh if if you think you have one of those type of products okay. uh, i personally would want to be and you know and there you're raising capital and you're dealing with a person who's a very wealthy person who has limited time, resources, are they concentrating on you or 12 seasons ago, whatever product they're doing. I'm very skeptical. When I used to go to trade shows before COVID, I would see many people that on that show, they are they get the deal, but then after there's 30 days or something where the shark reviews them and re-examines it, and most of those deals never get consummated. Yeah. Hey, what about when the trade show, well, let's talk about trade shows for just a minute. Sure. I have this prototype. That's all I have. Yeah. And I go to a trade show and I get a little booth and uh, everybody and their brother's walking by. Is that a good idea? I don't think so. No. <laughs> I would rather make appointments with people that you think are legitimate prospects and present okay. the item to them. Makes more sense to me too. Okay. Yeah, because Oops. you know, not only your whatever your industry is, I don't know if it's hardware, housewares, whatever, you're exposing it to not only you know 
companies looking for new products, you're looking at ex, you know yeah. established competitors who are looking for their own new products. So, yeah, yeah I think that'd be super dangerous. Um, I've got a question here too. Okay, I'm, let's say I have this product. I've been selling it myself, and it's that's pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, and I, but I'm doing it myself. Maybe I have a on Amazon, whatever. But I've got some pretty big numbers here, and it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have the type of exposure you could bring to the party. Um, would you license it from me, but still let me sell it on my on Amazon? I don't know about Amazon. But like we've had inventors who've sold their product through, maybe they're already in a catalog, so we would carve that out, or they're selling to chiropractors or okay. uh, some other places that we haven't sold to. Like they, they have some traction, so that would not be a problem for us. Once you get past Walmart, Target, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond in the past, Walgreens, CVS, uh, top five catalogers, you've covered 98% of the market. So we would have no problem with an inventor who has some, some traction. Amazon would be different because the television would be driving the Amazon sales at that point. Got it. Right. Um, hey, Andrew, let's, let's open up for questions because we're always a little short on time. Let's okay. see what people are asking. Uh, da -da -da -da, let's see. Uh, William says, is as seen on TV still viable for short form products? While TV is being watched more of late, I don't see the proliferation of products as I did a few years ago. This is from William. So um, he, he's asking is, is as seen on TV viable for short, short term products? Extremely. Extremely viable. The amount of short form media that was bought this year versus last year is way up. Um, so definitely, and our business is all about short form. We do not do, our company does not do long form. We've been very successful and people are still buying. Okay. Profitable. And another one from William there, and I won't mention their names of their companies, but how do you compare yourself with other DRTV firms? Good question. Uh, we do a few products a year. We're very responsive to the inventor. We get back real quickly and we make the inventor part of the process from the commercial to the, from the scripting to the commercial to the manufacturing. We think the inventor knows the product best. Cool. Some of these questions I think came in before you had answered them, but it never hurts to just hit them real quick because we got a bunch sure. here. Um, Aaron said, "Does Top Doc direct license products, or do they want it manufactured first? I think you pretty much answered that, though. Huh? Uh, we either way, we've we've actually bought product from somebody like Mighty Putty, Mighty Mend It came straight from the manufacturer, but either way, we're open to either." But we have our own manufacturing in most of our categories who do it really efficiently. So it's probably better that we're the manufacturer. And it's our money. Hey, hey Steve, tell me this. If I've got a seasonal product just for summertime at the beach, is that going to be interesting to you or not? Not really. Not really. I was just presented a product that was a fall project uh, today, actually. And I referred them, I said it was a really good product, it looked great, but it's very seasonal and maybe QVC or HSN has done a good business in that particular category over the years. So that's how I referred that one. But no, seasonal is not great for us because by the time you test the product and put it into retail, there's a lead time. And so seasonal is not great. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Eric says, so you start selling on TV and then move to retail, question mark. I think they both happen at the same time nowadays. In the old days, you might have six months on TV and then to retail, but now no. Uh, 
there would be less lead time from TV to retail. Next one, this is a good one. This is from Jess. Does Steve feel the same way about inventors only submitting to one DRTV company at a time? I think he's referencing that we've talked about that before at InventRight. If we shotgun the 22 DRTV companies at the same time, will Top Dog not look at my product now? So what are your thoughts on that? We've had other DRTV companies tell us, Steve, that they they really, which is kind of weird, right? They really don't like it when you've shown it to another DRTV company. <laughs> Well, our industry does have sharks. So if it's a really good idea and the protection, well, some of our competitors may not respect the protection that you've gotten from the patent office or what have you. I would do your research on who you trust and do it sequentially. I know our company can give you a quick turnaround with an answer and we're going. Others will be a little slower to their process. So I would not suggest shotgunning them to all, to all. And Stephen Key and myself have been giving that advice for DRTV for a long time based on people in DRTV saying that. Now for products outside of DRTV, it's the opposite. We believe if you got, you know, 20 kitchen companies, you should just approach them all at the same time. Don't do one at a time. It'll take you forever. But DRTV is kind of the one place where we make an exception right there, right, Stephen? I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really um, smart approach, one at a time. Give them a chance to review it, say yes or no, and then go to the next one. Hey, Steve, I have a question. Let's say I show it to another DRTV company. They say no. Uh huh. Can I still show it to you? Absolutely. <laughs> One of our one of our biggest successes was turned down by one of our major competitors, <laughs> and everybody has a different set of eyes, you know. It's like okay. dating, and so this item immediately captured our imagination, and we went immediately to do a commercial. Uh, one of the other successes, one that you showed tonight, uh, was an upsell to their product. And they had it in their hands and didn't do anything with it for years. And we made it a commercial. We made it at Hero. So, no, if somebody says no, it's not no to us until we say it. I really somebody like may, that. Somebody may reject it because they don't want to spend the time uh, verifying the claims involved or a regulatory process that might have to be dealt with with the FDA or what have you. We, we have those resources. Neil just has more of a comment here and the question he's just say he wrote just got to say I love submitting ideas at top dog speedy response from Jackie no bs direct feedback haven't licensed anything yet but we'll keep submitting so that was from Neil well um, thanks yeah he's a former event rights student of ours um Eric says how fast can you scale the product it's kind of a general question but I don't know you have a range maybe but it matters what the product is but because it's so explosive when we have a hit product, our sourcers, if it's manufactured in China or here in the United States, if it's a, a beauty product or something that's in a bottle, a liquid in a bottle like urine gone, we have to be able to know that that manufacturer can go crazy and make a lot of pieces very, very quickly. So we're, we're ready to go. We're ready to... <laughs> To jump all over something if it's if it's successful on television. John has a question. What is short for short? Sorry, short form versus long form. Short form would be uh, usually a two minute, one minute commercial. That's what we that's what we do. And long form are those half hours. I think they're actually twenty eight and a half minutes. We do not do those. Uh, we have. We don't have products that lend themselves to multi-pay. We don't do those type of beauty products. We don't do large products. Our our idea is to, you know, make a success on television and take it to retail. And most of those long form projects are not retail oriented. 
This one's from William. It's kind of long, so mm. kick back here. William says, I have a 1995 product that I've tested successfully in a small way at fairs and festivals. It caters to both the old and the young market, no patent, but doesn't infringe on anything, and I have a great trademark name. Can this be a viable DRTV product in the marketplace, even with ad rates going up? It has a price cost ratio of five to one. Yes. I would say very much yes to that. Um, a lot of the early successes in direct response television all came from the fairs, all kinds of mops and I mean, knives, it was, you know, all practically all the original products were fair, what we call fair items. So if we looked at the product, maybe we would look at it and maybe it could work at 1999 with proper upselling, a deluxe unit of some kind of the item, a different kit configuration, that type of thing. So I would say a big yes to that. Okay. Uh, I think we'll do maybe one or two more. This one's a good one to kind of be an indicator for you to kind of let us know like what, what is definitely not a DRTV product and what is. So Ricky says, does Top Dog Direct take on products for the commercial trucking industry? So, you know, we, we don't want people submitting just everything in the kitchen sink to you. There's certain things that are appropriate for a DRTV and certain things that definitely aren't. And so yeah. can you answer Ricky's question is for commercial trucking and then give us an idea of what's definitely not a right match, what might be a right match? Yeah, commercial trucking wouldn't be uh, very low dollar items. So I'm just trying to think um, large pieces of fitness equipment. Uh, it's not interesting. Um, uh, safety products have traditionally not been good. Things related to the toilet, we get a few of those constantly. Um, but, but like, I can give you the 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 um, the criteria. It needs to be a mass market product. It needs to solve a problem, not a small problem, but a big problem. It needs a visual demonstration. It needs a markup of four to one at least. It can't be at mass retail currently. It has to work quickly. It has to be a good value versus competitive solutions. So I don't want to pigeonhole which categories, but it shouldn't be an industrial product for sure. Got it. That was very helpful. That was great. Yeah, and, and those criteria are on the website. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, where let me let me pull that up here. Um, get my computer working here. So it's on the submit services. Submit of, I, th I think it's under service. Oh, where you got yeah, under services? I think it's under services. Okay. okay. There what we is go. the right product? Oh, okay, this is great. So they can go to your website and get a point of reference there. How is Top Dog Direct different? Yeah, that you asked the right questions. Yeah. Okay. Great. So you guys can go to topdogdirect.com and read more about that yeah. to see what they're looking for. Right. Um. Yeah. I think I think we're we're pretty good, Steve. It's, it's you got two two. I got Steve and Steven. <laughs> I'm Steve. I got, and I'm Steven. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't know who's who anymore. <laughs> I, my name's Andrew. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> Steve, it's been it's been really great. Thank you so much for for sharing. You seem very um, if you don't mind me saying, you seem very down to earth for a DRTV guy, if you know what I mean. And I um, think inventors will pick that up. And our whole group, Bill McAllister and Jackie, we're inventor friendly. That's our main difference, I would mm -hmm. think. And just like I said, you know, I'm an author. I sympathize with having your baby, the thing, the product of your ideas being submitted to strangers and trying to get a response and not just a no, but why no? And that I think is important. Okay. And a yes, and if it's a big yes, hey, great, let's get to it. Let's not, you know, let me get involved and uh, let's do it quickly. So that that's how we operate. Very cool. I don't have a chance to read them all, but I'll just read a few. I'll read maybe four here. 
Kate says, another great webinar. Thank you. Aaron said, thank you. All this was great. Uh, Janet said, thank you for your knowledge and time. Darcy, phenomenal webinar. So informative. I'm looking forward to seeing more of your products on TV. So um, really cool. It's, it's nice to know. I mean, you took time out of your day to share your knowledge with everybody, and we really appreciate that. Well, it sounds like you. since you're an author, you're not new to that. Maybe that's no. why you feel, maybe that's why you're a little different than other DR TV people I've talked to. I don't know. And by the way, your InventRight organization is much different than the other invention organizations by leaps and bounds. So kudos to you guys and what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, some of those are so bad, it's not saying a lot, but I thank you for... for exactly. Um, Andrew, we got, Andrew. We got, <laughs> hey, I didn't say anything specific. I didn't mention any particular company. No, um, I didn't either. And I didn't mention my competitors either. Yeah, it's, I, we never do. So um, we have a lot of people, I guess some people join late, so a ton of people are asking. So I want to leave you guys hanging, asking where, where, how do I submit? To Steve, and so Let's you show, go to Top show Dog. Show that again, Andrew. Show that again. There you go. Yeah, I am showing. I'm showing it right now. So you go to TopDogDirect.com, and you can click on Submit a Product right there. Okay. Right. Uh, and that top goes TopDogDirect.com. So. Yeah, and that goes directly to uh, Jackie and our email, so we get that. That's the best way to get get to it. You know, phone calls are not the best way, but this way it, it makes you organize your thoughts and your presentation. And I know, you know, on the on a phone call, you know, it doesn't get it across, you know, just by putting it together and thinking about it. Uh, I think that's the best best way. And then it's giving our our energy and our attention directly to you, as opposed to busting up our day while we're involved with something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Stephen Key, you have anything you want to say in closing? Wrap up here. Well, I think this company is amazing, actually, and I'm really happy that we had Steve on. I'm, I just think that you have to come up with some good ideas. Listen to this webinar. Submit good ideas to Steve. Th these guys are the real deal, and they're going to treat you fairly. And I love that he said they're inventor friendly. They know what they're doing. And Steve, I cannot thank you enough for for coming on tonight. And thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Steve. Remind everybody to take care, keep inventing, and we'll catch up with you next time. Good night. Good night, everybody.